Tiana, Hakeem, Cookie, and I think Thirsty was there, I can't remember. They're all talking to a lawyer about Anika wanting to get custody of Bella. Hakeem is telling the lawyer everything that's happened, like, yeah, she was my stepmom and we used to fuck. The lawyer, this white dude, his name is Skip. Skippy. Skippy's sitting there like, oh, your stepmom? Okay, what, what, whatever. Long as you pay me, I'm good. Cookie got a text or somebody got a text. The phones went off. And the person that hit him up was like, turn on TMZ. And they're talking about Lucius. It's come to their attention that he is kind of fucked up in the game right now. They automatically assume that Anika is the one who leaked the story. Even though we know Warren told Diana and of course Diana exposed the story. Meanwhile, across town, Dre is laying up in the bed with Detective Pam because they've just got finished fucking. So she gets up and she's like, oh, I wasn't supposed to be here this long, daddy. Ooh, you're working me good. So she gets her phone because now she has to go to work. And while she's like looking at her phone, Dre's like, so, so, so what's going on with the case? And she's like, daddy, I can't tell you those things. I can give you some pussy though. Nothing about the case though. Mm -mm. I must be professional about the case. Just had Andre's dick in your mouth and now you want to be professional? Fuck out of here with that bullshit. He's like trying to get information out of her and she's just like was there something you want to tell me daddy and dre's like nah you ain't gonna get me with that shit then it goes back over to motherfucking claudia talking to lucius because he's having breakthroughs and she's like i want to be there for you i want you to be the man that i know you can be i know you can be him and lucius is like i i want to remember and then, sometimes, I don't want to remember. Just little by little, you can see that Lucius is coming out. And this Dwight motherfucker is about to go away forever. But wait. But wait. So as they're in there, she trying to get picked so bad. She just looks so pathetic, like, Dwight, please. Love me and let me into your life. Please, Dwight, please. And he's kind of like, mm, maybe not really. So as they're sitting there talking, Cookie comes into the room, and she's like, we got a motherfucking problem. And she shows them the story. People are suspecting that there's something wrong with Lucius. Because there is something wrong with Lucius. As I said before, they think Anika did it. But Lucius was like, well, we gave that bitch $25 million. Why the fuck would she do this? And Cookie's like, I don't know, but we need to take care of this right now. That's how the episode started. Cookie, Lucius, and Claudia, they all go to Empire because they have to meet with the board and they have to intercept any issues they'll have pertaining to the story that got leaked. The press is already there. They're asking all these questions, so they kind of breeze right by them and they go to the conference room. The board is just looking at Cookie like, um, bitch, what's going on here? The press is here and we need answers. They need answers. And of course, Cookie has to lie. So she's like, ain't nothing going on. Everything's fine. Fuck y'all, basically. Maybe the press can follow Lucius around for a day or two. And they like, alright, well, if that will help to quiet all the bullshit that's taking place, then let the fucking press follow him around. That's fine with us. Now, mind you, Lucius has been very, very nice for these past four episodes during this meeting because, of course, the board wants to make sure that they don't lose no money and ain't no funny business going on. They had the audacity to kind of look at Lucius and be like, yo, what's going on? Is the story true? Let's, what's going on with you? I guess this would be the only time that they could really come at Lucius Lion. And even in his sedated state, he was just like, I'll answer to y'all. My company's making a lot of fucking money. You can kiss my mentally arrested ass. Cookie's sitting there like, mm, Lucius. Her cookies are baking down there. And Claudia is off to the side because she's always so nervous. So she's just like, oh, Dwight, don't say them. Mm. No. Fuck Claudia. So even after Lucius told these people, like, look, I don't have to answer to you. This is my fucking company. As long as business is fine, then fuck what these stories have to say. That's still not good enough for them. The, the big, the fat John, I don't even know what her name is. Didn't they, like, kill her dog? Why does she still work there? She's a dumbass. I'd have been left. She's like, well, we still need a medical evaluation. And Cookie's like, bitch, we need one for you, too. It was so fucking funny when she said that shit. The idea to have the press follow Lucius, as long as they can fool the press, then that can take some of the heat off. Dre and Shine 
will never, ever, ever get back together. Detective Pam is playing mind games with a pussy. What she's doing is, she's fucking Dre. And she must have lucky charms in her pussy. His, his head is not in the game. So she comes to his job. She basically tells him that Shine ratted on him. She playing Dre. She trying to get information out of him. Dre smart as shit. He fucked up, but he's smart as shit. He not gonna give her anything. He like, look, I already told you everything that I know. And she like, oh, all right, daddy, if you say so. Because when she first got there, he thought that she was there because she wanted some more dick. But that wasn't the case at all. She wanted some answers. And she wanted to play with him. And she wanted to, like, rattle his nerves. Which she did. Then after that, she had the audacity to put her hand on his lap like, so, is the lion dick ready now? Like, no bitches ain't ready now. You done fucked it up. First of all, my bipolar done kicked in, fucking with you. And now, I got to go. Because I'm at work. Be gone. After Detective Pam came and saw Dre, Dre was pissed, so he went to go see Shine. And before he runs up on Shine, Shine is on the phone with somebody, and he's like, "Yeah, woman, stop calling me. I, stop calling me. Yeah, I love you. All right, I, I'll be home whenever." And my first question was, "Where the fuck is Nessa? And does she have a cell phone? Because that could have been Nessa on the phone." Don't buy care about that But anyway, Dre runs up on Shine, grips him up, and he's like, You went to the cops! You went to the cops! Ah! You know, because Dre crazy. Shine is like, Yo, get the fuck off me! I ain't that dude! And Dre is like, You didn't go see the cops? Shine is like, No, I ain't see the fucking cops. I'm like, who, who did you talk to? You the one running off with motherfuckers talking to the cops and shit. That's you. And Dre has finally had enough. He's like, you know what? If you want to tell my family what the fuck happened, go go right ahead. I don't care no more. And he just walks off. So Shine is like, Dre, Dre. So now Shine is shook because Dre is unpredictable. You never know what you're going to get with this motherfucker. Unless you're Detective Pam because you know you're going to get some dick. Other than that, Dre is a loose cannon. And now that he doesn't care, who knows what's going to happen next. Jamal and Warren are still a thing because they should be because have you seen Warren god y'all when Warren is on the screen I just want to I just want to crawl through the TV mush Jamal in his face and be like he's a dickhead be with me Warren is falling for Jamal I know he is and so does Angelo because Angelo shows up outside of Empire as soon as Jamal gets out of the car Angelo's like hey Jamal what's up man Bella's court hearing is going to be in, at, uh, in the next episode so Angelo is serving papers to Jamal. Warren gets out the car, and Angelo's like, well, who's this tall, rent boy looking dumbass, trick-ass nigga? He hates, I don't know why he hate Warren so much, but, I don't know, maybe short man syndrome. Warren's like, hey, yo, man. You know, he like kind of standing up for Jamal, and Jamal's like, nah, boo, it's cool. No, stop. Don't fuck up that pretty face. And Angelo's bitch ass, He's such a bitch. Before Angelo left, he looked at Jamal. He was like, how do you think the story about your father got out to the press? And Horn was just like, mm -mm, don't do it, please. Don't do it. Angelo walks off. And Jamal's dumbass. He's like, no, no, no. Don't let him rattle you, baby. He's just mad because my mom played him. I know you wouldn't do nothing to me to hurt me. Mm hmm. Warren is standing there looking like he's pissed because he was pissed. Later in the episode, as Angelo is sitting at his desk, Warren comes in and he's like, well, what the fuck was that out there, man? And Angelo's like, well, you look like you're falling for Jamal and I'm going to tell mommy. I'm going to tell mommy on you. Warren's like, I don't give a fuck. Tell your mom. The only person scared of her is your bitch ass. And then there's a knock at the door. It's Hakeem. Like, Diana, we got to talk. Every time Hakeem is in a scene, and he plays like the tough Tony role. I just be like, I just, I don't buy him as a tough guy. Angelo answers the door. Angelo's like, well, she ain't here. Get ready for the, your day in court. And Hakeem's like, yo, man, I don't know who you think you're talking to. And then Angelo says something like, uh, you better get ready for Bella to call another man daddy. And of course, why he say that? Because that set little short fuse, silly ass Hakeem off. And he like, he pushed Angelo and then hit the shit out of him and Angelo's face was leaking. So Angelo comes back and he's like, mm, you know they frown on violent parents in the court system. See you tomorrow, bitch. And then he closed the door in front of his face. So you know 
tough ass Hakeem, he was ready to leave. This motherfucker is in a car with a chicken, and I don't even know who the other dude is. He may have been there since the beginning, but I never knew what his name is. But the girl, her name is Chicken. So they're in the car, and he like, I gotta get out of town. I can't stay here. I gotta go. <laughs> they gonna take my baby. <laughs> he holding on to passports and shit. The, the dude, his friend is like, yo, the, the jet is gassed up. We ready to go, dog. And Chicken's like, yeah, motherfucker. You gonna be all right. You and Bella to the Empire. Running like a little bitch. I hate Hakeem sometimes. He just gets on my fucking nerves. He really does. He do the stupidest shit. And then be like, mm, I didn't mean to do it. Then bitch don't do it in the first place. Alright? Just don't do it at all. So, now that Hakeem has hatched this plan to get the fuck out of town after he attacked Angelo and got to go to court the next fucking day, he goes to see Tiana. She just was in the studio. So she come out there, hair all resplendent looking like black Rapunzel and she's like what the fuck is going on why you ain't answering my text and he like babe um I think I kind of fucked up we need to leave and she like leave where the fuck we going oh we can't stay here we gotta go and you me and Bella baby I can't do without you I love you so much please come with me please and she's like um alright sure uh just don't leave me I'll see you at the airport in the morning he's like yes thank you so he gets in the car and the next day, uh, they arrive at the the airport. The private jet is like a real plane. I'm thinking it's going to be like one of them. Ooh, God, I can't say that. Man, that was so bad. Keem is waiting for Tiana. So he's at the door. And Tiana come through looking like the superstar that she is because Tiana is a superstar. She's actually all of them because one week she looked like Rihanna and the next week she looked like Beyonce. So she comes up. She's like, babe, I'm here. Let's go. He's like, all right, let's go. But wait. And then Cookie comes like through the door. He's like, motherfucker, where are you going? And Keem is like, I can't stay here, mom. I can't stay here. She's like, I can't lose you. You my son. I didn't do 17 years in the clink for this. We gonna fight together. We the lions to the empire. And he's like, all right, cool. I'm gonna go back because he's so fucking stupid. Apparently, I'm a little slow. Why I say slow and did this? I don't know. Because I'm slow. I didn't realize that uh, when Cookie proposed this idea for the 20 for 20, she didn't mean 20 albums by the end of the year. She's going to do 20 albums over the course of their 20th year, which makes a hell of a lot more sense. The first album for the 20 for 20 is going to be Empire Artists recreating some of Lucius's best tracks. Because the press is there, they need to make sure that it looks like Lucius knows what's going on. Andre appoints Becky to oversee the whole press interaction. Becky has a lot of experience and she's been by Lucius' side for the whole show, basically. In the first studio they go to, Veronica is there, and I love Veronica. This chick can sing her ass off. Becky is sitting next to Lucius, the press is in the back watching as he works his magic. They already told Lucius what they wanted him to say. So it would look like the ideas were coming from him. But while he was sitting there, he started seeing colors again because that's what he does. He's the reading rainbow. He saw green, and I don't know if they ever explained what green was, but he made Veronica stop singing. And he's like, look, sing like all this shit is getting ready to be taken away from you. In this very moment, everything that you worked so hard for, it's all being taken away from you right now. That's how I want you to sing the song. And they're all like, oh, shit. Yeah. Cookie's in the background. She's like, mm, that's my man. And Veronica sings the song again. Beautiful song. The interaction with Veronica was pretty good. Lucius was happy. He was pleased with what she was doing. The next interaction, though, was not good at all. They went to go see Jamal. But you know Jamal. He's so particular about his shit. And when Cookie came with the press, he just looked at him like, mm, -mm no, I'm not ready. Get out. So they left. And they went to go see Shine in a different studio. Becky pulled Lucius to the side and was like, yo, stop calling him Moonshine. Just be like Shine, all right? Because you wouldn't call him Moonshine, just call him Shine. So he walked in there, he like, yo, Shine, what you got for me? I was like, yes, Lucius. And Shine is like, yo, L, you remember this song from back in the day? I'm about to play it for you. So he plays it, and everybody in the studio is just kind of like, eh, whatever, Shine, you know, old-ass rapper. Lucius is sitting there. He started flinching and shit, like Thriller. And Claudia, she sits down quickly like, Ooh, babe, I saw that. Tell me, what do you see? And he's like, oh, I see colors. 
Claudia's like, what colors, boo? What? And Lucius is like, red. Crimson red. Like murder. Stop the track. This shit is whack, Sean. Get back to work. And he gets up and leaves. And it's like, damn. Okay, Lucius, I see you coming back. I miss Lucius. Evil ass, I miss him. So Lucius is displeased with Shine's track. And there's something going on in his brain where he knows he needs help. So he leaves while the press is watching. Cookie's like, well, where you going? Where you going? He's like, look, I know what I got to do. Just let me go. And he goes. And Claudia and Cookie are looking at each other like, what the fuck? And then they notice the press is behind. Them. They're like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. They saw that. So Cookie runs over. She's like, all right, y'all, that's all off the record. Fuck all this. Andre and Thirsty, they're standing there with Cookie. And they're like, look, darling, um, the board wants to get rid of you. You need to make some shit happen right now. Tell the press to go home. And we need to figure something out. And Cookie's like, all right, I don't want to lose my job. Let's just end this shit. So as soon as she's getting ready to tell the press to go, Lucius comes back with Eddie. Forrest Whitaker. Eddie got on this Colonel Sanders shit. I don't know what was happening with Eddie. He looked like he owned the chicken place that JJ worked at in good times. But he was there to save the day. And everybody was like, oh my god, it's Eddie. 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 It's Eddie. Yay! Because you know he's famous. Then they go see Tiana. Because now it's time to work on Tiana's track. Tiana's doing one of Cookie's favorite songs. It's called, I never know the name of these fucking songs. Tiana song. I don't the fuck know. It, does, it doesn't matter. She's in the studio. She got on all this pink looking like Barbie. And she's getting ready to sing. Eddie sits down. Lucia sits down. And Cookie, they're all in a row sitting down. The song that Tiana does for the first album, Cookie says she pimped it. I don't know what she meant, but it means something to her. It's, it's like her favorite song. The song that Veronica was singing is actually a song that Lucius wrote after Cookie went to prison. In the final moments while the press were observing him, Eddie Barker, because I had to go back and watch it because I remember his name, Eddie let Lucius know that that song was him pouring out all of his emotions into how he felt for Cookie and that Empire, the actual company, is like his love letter to her, even though, you know, they went through so much shit. But still, I mean, you know, Cookie and Lucius, they like, they love each other. They do. I think he saw like red, not red, he saw like pink, like soft pink with Tiana and Veronica. Because I guess that's for love or whatever. So he goes to see Claudia. And he asks her, he's like, why do I see colors when I hear music? And Claudia's like, have you ever heard of Cine Theater that have you ever heard of Thinna thin She said the word. Synesthes. Synesthes. Fuck. She asked him, have you ever heard of synesthesia? And he doesn't know what the hell that is. I didn't know what the hell it was. I could barely say it. Then she pulls out her phone and she plays some music for him. And she's like, what color do you see now? She has all these paints laid out because she already knew what it was. He goes over to the paints. And he picks up the blue, so he starts doing something with the blue. He ends up drawing on the wall, like he was drawing at home with Bella's watercolors. Cookie comes in and she's like, what the fuck is going on here? And she's like, oh, he has synesthesia. And Cookie's like, I know he got amnesia, bitch. That's not what I asked you. And she's like, no, 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 It's a, a different disorder. He can't get the music to come out the way that he normally would. So painting is his way of getting the music out of him. And Cookie finally realizes that he's starting to come back. Back at the house, Claudia has set up more paints. And it's almost like Miss Claudia's daycare with finger paints and shit. Lucius is there and he's listening to the music in his head and he's playing with the paints. Claudia is like, What do you hear? He's like, Shut up, bitch! And Claudia's standing there like, She's all getting into it, and now he's he's come over to her, and he's painting her, and finally it just it just he just snaps out of it, and he looks at her, and he's like, "I remember you. You're my muse." She's smiling from ear to ear, like, "Oh, Claudia, darling, 
call an Uber. This whole time, he wasn't seeing Claudia. He was seeing Cookie. When I tell you I almost threw the remote across the room when I saw that scene where he was dancing with Claudia, he saw Cookie and he was like, I love you. And he's really talking to Cookie. I almost called what I needed myself and said, get this bitch out the house right now. Did they fuck? Or did he just paint on her for a little bit and, you know, maybe like paint on a pussy and then just woke up like, chass up because it was time for her to go. Cody was um, laying on the floor covered in finger paints. Lucius was like, well, good morning. And she's like, oh, good morning. Oh, and she tried to cover up because she do have scars on her back. I don't know where they came from, but they're there. Maybe they came from the last motherfucker that kicked out. And he was like, don't cover up your scars. They're beautiful. She's like, oh, thank you. Oh, I want to just let you know that I love you too. And Lucy was like, okay, thank you for your services. Uh, my office will send you a check. And she's like, you told me I'm your muse. And he's like, I love Cookie. She's my muse. And Claudia's whole fa face crack of the yeah, shit was just on the ground. Which was perfect, because that's when Cookie came in. And Cookie was like, what the hell is going on here? Lucius was like, I'm back. And Claudia was just leaving. She was like, oh, Dwight, please sit down for a moment. And he's like, my name is Lucius. You need to go. Why need her? Claudia got too attached. She was beginning to believe the magic of Lucius lying, which is black magic this dude got a degree in the dark arts he had her believing that he was like this good dude which we all knew he's not a good dude at all painting with him she thought it was probably so beautiful like an art project like this is a lovely time paint on me daddy do it now paint it all over me and then he just was like he woke up the next day and was like i'm good you can go now and she just was not having it. She looked like she was about to start wilding out. But Cookie was standing right there. She's like, ah, bitch, don't do it. Juanita had to call her a cab. And the security dude, Cookie was like, why don't you take Claudia to her room so she can get herself together? And then, just like that, she was gone. Is she really gone? I don't know. One of the stipulations that the board had is that this album they're producing must be finished in a certain amount of time and there can't be any more bad press for Empire. I think the album had to be released within 48 hours. They were able to do it in 24 hours, release it to Empire Extreme, which is still around, and much to the board's displeasure, that still wasn't enough because one of the press people, they went onto their blog and said that Lucius lying ain't right in the head. And Shine was the one that read that off his phone. So Trey looked at him like, I'm getting tired, Shine. <laughs> like, he's going to smack this shit after him. <laughs> and Cookie, like, put her hand on her, like, wait, wait. Don't fuck him up. <laughs> the board is like, you know what, Cookie? We appreciate your efforts. And she's like, no, wait, 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 wait. Lucius got a brain injury. When we was in Vegas, he got a brain injury. And that's why he's acting the way he is. But he is coming along and he will be fine very, very soon. And they were like, well, thank you for telling us some shit we already knew. Pack your bags and get the fuck out. So then she runs off and she goes to get Eddie. And she's like, Eddie will stay on. I'll be the CEO. Eddie will stay on and help me. And that pleases them because Eddie's a super producer. Cookie gets to keep her position. They know that everything's going to be fine, especially after what they saw uh, the day before. So that battle is over. I wasn't really into Becky's Hawaiian Barbie dress. No. Face was beat. Face was beat crazy, but the dress, I wasn't into it. Cookie's Zubili Zoo dress was fine. It was actually kind of cool. And the thing she wore at the end, she looked like she was getting ready to go dance on solid gold. I love Cookie, so it's fine. And yes, I'm not going to sit here and not mention Portia and that Fraggle Rock wig she had on. As soon as her scene came up, I was just like, what in the strawberry shortcake reject friend shit is this? Whatever. She getting a check. She making more money than me. Slap the wig on my head. I'd wear that shit too if you pay me Empire money. Fuck that. I'd do it. 